for sure by now that you would have reached down and wiped our tears away, stepped in and saved the day. But once again, I say amen, and it's still raining but as the thunder rolls. I barely hear you whisper through. God who gives and takes away. And I'll praise you in this storm, and I will lift my hands. For you are who you are, no matter where I am. And every tear I cry, for you hold in your hand. You never left my side. I will praise you in the storm I remember when I stumbled in the wind You heard my cry to you And raised me up again But my strength is almost gone How can I carry on? If I can't find you But as the thunder rolls I barely hear you whisper through the rain I'm with you And as your mercy falls I'll raise my hands And praise the God who gives And takes away
morning, Modesto. Okay, come on, let's try this again. Good morning, Modesto. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. Okay, now's the time for everybody to get up and greet your neighbors. For those of you who are online, greet your family members, go out and greet your neighbors, or say hi and hug your pets. I, you know what? Me too. <laughs> so why I'm here. <laughs> Thank you for coming, though. My candy money. All right. Now, everybody, find your seats. Okay, so if we're ready, let's bow our heads and have a moment with God. Heavenly Father, we thank you, dear Lord, for this opportunity to meet together this Sabbath day. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for the lovely weather, although it's a bit chilly, but we thank you anyways, Lord God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for the freedom to gather together this day. We raise up to you, merciful God, our sorrows, our blessings, the love of family, the love of friends. We ask that your spirit be with us and bless us. Open our hearts, our eyes, our minds, our ears, that we hear the word of God being preached today. And we pray, merciful God, that you be with us this week and protect us in all that we do. Guide us, Lord Jesus, that we will be witnesses for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, shoe boxes. Those of you who still have them, they are due next Sabbath. When are they due? Next we could do better than that. When are they due? Next Sabbath. 23rd. Good. 
Okay, so if you still have them, please make certain that you wrap a heavy uh, rubber band around them so that the items don't fall out. And if you don't want to put something together, you can always donate online for the shoebox, or you can pack one online. Also next week is our Thanksgiving brunch. So get your favorite vegetarian recipe together, and don't forget to bring a utensil. That brunch is um, before church, right? Okay. So it will be lots of lovely little snackies and some wonderful breakfast items and some sweet little desserts and all kinds of yummy things. So plan on coming. Um, there's a calendar change with regards to Christmas decorating. That's going to be November 29th. When is that? And that's the day after Thanksgiving. So let's hope that there's going to be some people that help, and that will start at 10 o'clock in the morning. So when is that? At what time? Excellent. Hope to see you all there. Now, we have Kids Church. So after the little ones come up and collect the little dollar bills that you have and listen to... Um, I forgot your name. Auntie Sherry. Duh. <laughs> After they listen to Auntie Sherry's story, then there's Kids Church. So they go right over to Kids Church, and there's all kinds of fun things for them to do. So it's time for the little ones to come up for children's story with Auntie Sherry. <laughs> I think I caught ADHD <laughs> with Auntie Sherry. <laughs> Good morning. This morning's story is titled Surrounded. It was just a few years ago. I was 20 and had finished up two years at Walla Walla College. Summer was coming to an end and I was headed to Hawaii. I'd been there before with my family, but this time it would be different. I had decided to take a year off from school to be a student missionary on a small little island called Koshrai, located in the South Pacific, one of many small islands of Micronesia. 
Before heading to Koshrai, though, I first went to Hawaii. There were other students from various colleges who would also be there. So off to Hawaii I flew and arrived at Hawaiian Mission Academy. I don't recall how many other students there were, maybe 30, maybe more. Point is, there were many of us, and we were all doing the same thing. We were taking a year off from college and going to a foreign and faraway place to teach. How many of you go to school? Maybe you're a first grader, second grader, third grader, kindergartner. So some of us student missionaries would be teaching younger students and some would be teaching the bigger high school kids. But all of us would be experiencing a new place we'd never been to, where not all the people spoke English and where their homes were very different from ours. Some of the homes had dirt floors. Many did not have a refrigerator. Some of their ways of communicating were very different. For example, instead of answering yes to a question, they would do this. They would raise their eyebrows up and down to say yes. So it was here in Hawaii that we would be introduced to some of those cultural differences, learn a bit of what to maybe expect, and of course, some things about teaching. Now, outside of these informative meetings, we also had a brief amount of time to enjoy Hawaii before we each headed to our various islands. Most of us student missionaries were from California, Washington, or Oregon. But there was one student missionary who actually lived right there in Hawaii. His name was Henry. And because he lived right there, guess what? Henry knew all the best places. So one day, all of us, we were hanging out and chit-chatting during a break. And Henry, he says, hey, I know a place where the dolphins come almost every morning. Do any of you want to go? Now, if you don't know this about me, I love the ocean. And at the time, can you guess what my favorite animal was? Dolphins. So I was all in, as were a few others. Then the next morning we met up. It was probably around 7 in the morning, but maybe even earlier. And we hopped into the cars and we drove a short distance to the destination. We arrived and Henry said, okay, this is a place now. What was unique about this situation is that we would not be staying on the beach to see the dolphins, but it would be even better than that. We would be kayaking out. Henry had snorkeling gear for us. I believe there were four of us total. So two went into one kayak, and I hopped into the kayak with Henry, and off we paddled. Oops, let's see if I can do this. So... I was so excited. Henry had stated we would paddle out not too far. Then, once at the right place, we would hop out of the kayak and into the ocean, and we would see the dolphins. So off we paddled, and just like Henry had said, we paddled not too far before we got to the spot. Henry said, this is the place. We'll put our mask and snorkel on. We'll jump into the water and put our fins on, then wait for the dolphins to come. So I did just that. I put my mask. I'm going to snorkel on the mouth. <laughs> and we put our fins on and then waited. Oh, my heart was beating with excitement like never before. Our heads were underwater. I couldn't see them yet. But. I could hear them. I still remember the sound of their beautiful voices, and before I knew it, look behind you, I was also seeing the dolphins. There wasn't just one or two, there wasn't even just 10 or 20, but an entire pod of them. So many, I couldn't even count them. There I was, beneath the ocean surface, in front of me, there were dolphins. To the left of me, there were dolphins. To the right of me, there were dolphins. And guess what? When I looked behind me, there were even more dolphins. I was surrounded by them. As I share this story with you, it still seems so surreal. Too good to be true, as if it was all just an incredible dream. But boys and girls, this really did happen. 
And as I recall this experience, I can't help but be reminded of Jesus' love for me and how great his love is for me, not just for me, but for each one of us. And just like I was surrounded by these dolphins, we are all surrounded by Jesus' love for us. I encourage you to remember and to write down your stories that Jesus gives you of the times you personally experienced his goodness and his love for you. Let's close in prayer. Dear Jesus, I thank you for your love, and that even though we may not always realize it, you do surround us with your love. May we remember that and share it with others. We love you, Jesus. Amen. You can now return to your parents, and they can take you over to Kids During Church, located behind the welcome booth. Thank you, Auntie Sherry. <laughs> what a great story to remember that we're surrounded by God's love. And I think um, for me, it made me think the next time I'm out in nature and I am just surrounded by the trees or surrounded by the golden sunlight as the sun is setting, that I'll remember that as well, that we are surrounded by God's love. Now is the time for us to give back our offerings to God. Thank him for all that he's done for us. So we can give either online or there are envelopes in the pews and you can put something in that and put it in the slot in the back. Um, sometimes we don't really, uh, some people don't really know how all our giving works. So just to explain, when we give to the children and they come up and they put it in the little church here, that money actually goes into our scholarship funds to help kids uh, help families and children that need help going to our um, school, the Christian school. So that's what that goes for. And then when we give our tithes and offerings, when we write it on the tithe line, that's what gets sent to our conference that pays for pastors and administrators and it helps pay for my salary. When we give to um, local church budget, then we are giving to help a variety of things that we need around here. And that is, you know, everything from maintenance of the building to funding our different programs to um, paying for our wonderful uh, maintenance person who does so much. You saw him out there doing the farmer's market stuff and our children's ministry person who also is leading kids in church. So that fund goes to help with all of that. And then we also have different funds that you can give to if, if God so puts it on your heart that you feel impressed to give to maybe donate to help members in need or something like that. You can do that on the envelope or you can see those different places you can give on the um, online. You can click on them as well. So hopefully anyone who doesn't know how that works that you can um, prayerfully think about where you're giving money. I do want to share this as we come to the end of the year. Sometimes people are thinking, well, where should I give my money, God, to do the most good. I do want to let people know that we are we are very behind in our local church budget. As you know, if you have an annual budget at home, you try to stay with it. But we had lots of expenses this year, and we have not quite made budget. We are right now about $40,000 behind for the year. And we would not like to have to make cuts to our budget when we think about next year because we need to keep things moving forward. So if you have some money to give as you come to the end of the year, you want to think about where to put those donations, I would encourage you to consider your local church budget and, and um, your church community and our needs there. So thank you for, if you're here and you're a guest, we don't want you to feel like we're just asking for your money. Your presence is your offering. We're so happy to have you here. But as we participate in our walk with God, we know that generosity is what it means to be a Christian. Generous in our love, generous in our care for one another, and generous in the means that God gives us to help one another. Now it is time for our prayer time together. And as I always Share, we want you to come to God in whatever way you're comfortable. So you might want to stay seated. You might want to get on your knees if something particularly is on your heart. 
you might even, um, sometimes people like to come forward and feel like they're really bringing their, their burdens to God. Um, if you do come forward, then that also helps the church family know that you may need special prayer, even if we don't know what it is. So you're welcome to come to God, sit, stand, whatever way that you feel called as we come and pray to our Lord together. So I'm going to kneel as we pray to him. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for this moment that we can set the world aside and come apart, come together with other believers, other seekers of you. Lord, come here as your children before your throne of grace and remember that you are a father who loves each one of us. We come before you in many different places in our life. And Lord, um, we know your word says to enter your courts with praise. And some of us are praising you for things. We're praising you for fall. We're praising you for the, the beauty of the outdoors or for ways that you have blessed. And Lord, with, with all our heart, we, we celebrate with any of our family members here that are celebrating things in their life. We just want to thank you for the joys and the goodness and the favor that you're showing for answered prayer, Lord. And Lord, even if we don't have those things to praise you for, we want to praise you because we know that your love is always constant, that your grace is present. We can praise you for who you are, for being a God of forgiveness and mercy, and that you will never leave us. We can praise you for your promises that you will finish the work you've begun in us. We can praise you for the ultimate promises of eternal life. That those, this time of year that we may be missing, that we think of, that one day we will be restored together in your kingdom when you come. We thank you for the hope that we have. And Lord, also, we know that you know all the burdens on our heart. You know us so intimately. And we're so thankful that we can lay those at your feet and remember that you are the God of all power. That you can intervene into each one of our prayer requests for healing, for comfort, for provision, for guidance. And that, Lord, you pour out your spirit in answers in whatever way we need them. Physical healing, mental healing, spiritual healing. Direction, your voice says that we will, your word says that we will hear your voice behind us saying this is the way walk ye in it. And Lord, in providing, we know that you will take care of our needs, maybe not always our wants, but you will meet the needs that we have. And we're so thankful that you hear our prayers, that you know what we're struggling with, and we can lay them in your hands and trust that our Father, who knows all things, will answer. And Lord, as we continue now in this service, we, we know your presence is already here among us, but we just want to acknowledge it again, open ourselves up to it as we go into worship time, that we will not just sing the songs, but pray the songs, praise the songs, that, that as we share those words, we will be in your presence sharing those words to you, and that the words will be encouraging and inspiring our heart. And we pray a blessing on Robert as he speaks to us today, that your spirit would anoint him and speak through him, and that we would be open and ready to hear, that we would be humble, and that we would learn and that we would live more like you because we are called your children, your disciples. So we thank you for hearing all these words. We thank you for answering our prayers. We thank you for your presence. And again, as always, we thank you for your love. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. So as you heard, Pastor Rob is here. 
from Sunnyvale. So how special prayers for him as he gets up to share. He said he's nervous because it's been too long since he's been here. So, <laughs> but he's also brought some musicians with him from Sunnyvale, Ben and Janine. We're so thankful that you also made the trip over the hill today to share your gifts with us. Thank you so much. And we're so happy to have all of you here leaving your church family to come worship with us today. Forever God is faithful. Forever God is strong. Forever God is with us. Will you join me in singing to our King, our Lord? Is with us 
who breaks the power? Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much stronger? The King of glory, the King above all kings. Who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder? Who leaves us breathless in awe and wonder? The King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love That you would take my place That you would bear my cross You laid down your life That I would be set free Oh, oh, oh Jesus I sing for all that you've done for me Who brings our chaos back into order Who makes the orphan a son and daughter The king of glory, the king of glory Who rules the nations with truth and justice Shines like the sun in all of its brilliance. The King of glory, oh, the King above all kings. Oh, this is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. I sing for all that you've done for me. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. He's worthy. Worthy is the King who conquered. Sing, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain Worthy is the King who conquers the grave Worthy is the Lamb who was slain Worthy, worthy, worthy This is amazing grace This is unfailing love That you would take my place sing for how much you've done for me let's sing that chorus this is amazing grace Unfailing. This is unfailing love that you would take my place. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You laid down your life that I would be set free. I sing for all that you've done for me.
going to do a hymn called Oh, Worship the King. Uh, if it's not on the screens, you can look it up in your hymnals. Uh, oh, Worship the King. Not sure what page number it is, but. song we'll be singing together is called Build My Life, and you might need to look that up on your phones. I'm not sure if it'll be on the screens. Oh, I see it up there. Let me read this psalm, Psalm 16. You, Lord, are all I have, and you give me all I need. My future is in your hands. How wonderful are your gifts to me. How good they are. I praise the Lord because he guides me. And in the night, my conscience warns me. I am always aware of the Lord's presence. He is near and nothing can shake me. And so I am thankful and glad and I feel completely secure. 
because you protect me from the power of death. Feel me 
and show me, show me and fill me. Let's sing that one more time. Holy, holy, there's no one like you. There's nothing beside you. that you come into our hearts this morning. Soften our hearts to receive you. Open our ears to hear you. Use our lives to further your kingdom. Lord, let us be your servants. Humble our hearts. We know you are the King of kings, the Lord of lords. You are our friend. And you are our Savior. Send your Holy Spirit upon Pastor Rob as he delivers your message. We pray in Jesus' name. Good morning, church family. How's everybody doing? It's been a minute, huh? I missed you guys. It's good to be at my second home, right? Hey, listen, how about a big hand for Ben and Janine? Thank you, Janine. Thank you, Ben. They uh, set the table for us this morning so that we could worship. Amen, church? And I was just beautiful to get in that space. Hi, everybody up there. See, my church doesn't have that, so I have to remember that there's people up there. So, you know, what's up? Man, it's good to be here to see all your smiling faces. Um, yeah, I've, I've missed you. I hope you guys are doing well. Um, are you ready for, for this morning? You're ready to be blessed. You're ready to chase some squirrels. Pray that the Lord will give me focus this morning. Pray that he'll give me some clarity and that um, I will be an instrument in his hand to uh, speak a, a word to you about church. Thank you, uh, Pastor Sandy, uh, for giving me this invitation. I always like spending time with you. And your church family. So, uh, Father God, Lord, it is good to be in your house today. It's, it's, it's great to be amongst friends again. Lord, I, um, I find myself in this predicament where I am every Sabbath, where I feel like I'm insufficient for this task before me. And so I, I ask for a, a clear channel between your heart and my heart, in your thoughts and my thoughts, in your words and my words, that I won't get too far ahead of you, I won't lag too far behind you, but that I would be in the center of your will of what you want me to say today. And so, Father, I'll claim that promise that your strength is made perfect in my weakness. I'll claim that promise that I, if I be lifted up, I will draw all people into myself. And so, Father, I thank you that I believe with all my heart and my soul that your presence is here. 
I thank you for your spirit. I thank you for what you're going to do today. In Jesus' name. And the church said, amen. Amen. So I want to uh, start off by sharing a story with you. And there was this ship, and it was sailing through this remote area of islands. And as they were going in front of this island, they, they noticed that this man was like waving frantically at this ship that was sailing by. And they could tell by this man's appearance that he had been on this island for a good minute because his hair was long, his beard was all scraggly, his, his pants were torn, and he had no shirt. And this, like, this was like a legitimate like, castaway. And they go, well, we got we to gotta pull ashore to rescue this poor guy. And so they, they, came, they came ashore, and they noticed that this man had built three huts. And so um, they asked him, what is, what is this? What is this first hut right here? What is this first hut? And they said, well, the guy goes, well, this is my home. And they go, so then what is the second hut? Oh, well, that's my church. And so then they go to the the third hut and said, so then what's this hut for? He goes, oh, that hut. That hut was a church I used to go to. Sometimes we might get uh, the idea of what church is. We might get it a little twisted. Are you with me, church family? Our understanding and our perspective of what church is might not be in alignment with what God wants church to be and how the Bible defines it to be. And that's why sometimes we can come to church and, and we can get bored or disinterested or indifferent. And, and, but that's... That's not the purpose of church. And then we can find ourselves uh, church hopping because I just, I just didn't feel like I got anything at this church, and so I'm going to go to this other church. And so, ah, I don't feel anything in there, so I'm going to go to this other church. And then we find ourselves going to church for, for the entertainment value, for, for the, mer- uh, the music or for the, the, the cult of personality and the pastor or for the, the potluck, right? Uh, and, and, and that's not what church is all about. And so this morning, I want to spend a minute with you and talking about uh, what is church. And the title of my sermon today is This is Church. So ha- hopefully after the message, we'll have a clear understanding of what church is. So turn with me uh, to your Bible, in your Bibles to uh, Mark chapter 2, or your Bible devices. But let's all get to this story in Mark Chapter 2, and I like it. I see uh, the pastor with her Bible. I see my family with her Bible. My mom, she's gr- Say happy Sabbath to my mom. She's here today. Mom, happy Sabbath, mom. My two lovely sisters, my brother-in-law, my, 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 my niece, everyone's here. So it is going to be a good day today. Okay, so Mark, chapter 2, we're starting at the top. And it goes, uh, a few days later when Jesus entered Capernaum, the people heard that he had come home. So they gathered in such large numbers that there was no room left, not even outside the door. And he preached the word to them. Verse 3, some men came bringing to him a paralyzed man carried by four of them. Since they could not get to him, To see Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof uh, above Jesus by digging through it and then lowered that the mat the mat uh, the man was laying on. And um, I think I have a slide of um, this is what uh, this is some actually ancient tiles that they found, and this is what. uh, the homes would look at, look like. And so on top of them, there were like flat roofs, right? And they had tiles there. And so there were so many people around the door and around the courtyard and, and, and in the back and everywhere else around the windows because Jesus was there. And whenever Jesus appeared, crowds appeared. Now, why did crowds appear around Jesus at all? What was up? For healing, right? Because they knew that, that if Jesus could heal them, 
uh, then th that, that was a good day, right? If you were sick or paralyzed or blind or couldn't walk, right? But what else? What else did Jesus do? He gave them food, right? Food's a big deal. Listen, I love coming to Modesto to the uh, collegiate, collegiate Sabbath school because there's like a full like coffee bar, you know, like they, they have like, they have like lunch, spe I mean, breakfast specials and you know what I mean? And you can order whatever drinks that you want. They have like meals of the day and little parfaits and little fancy uh, bougie stuff to eat. I'm lucky to get a, like a bagel at my church, you know? And so, and so but, but Jesus, you know, you feed people, they'll come. You feed people for free and you'll have crowds, right? And so they, they came not only to like get healed, but they came to get food. And then there was this one time where Jesus, he was, goes to this wedding and they run, they, they run out of what? They run out of wine. And I'm glad you said wine. Some churches said juice. And I'm like, I don't know about this juice. But anyways, that's a, a different topic for a different message. So, so Jesus makes this wine, turns water to wine. And so then that's a good thing, too, to go see Jesus. Because you never know what's going to happen. He could feed you. He could give you a little bit of a wine tasting room. You know what I mean? He can do all this stuff. And, and, and there was more. There was, there, was, there, there was the healing. There was the food. There was the wine. But what else? Why else would people go to see Jesus? Never, never was there a guy who spoke like this. I love that you said that. Because people would, they, they would go. They went to arrest Jesus, right? And then that's the quotation that you're giving. That's the quote. They went to arrest Jesus. Go arrest this guy because he's teaching heresy. The soldiers, they go there with their, uh, their spears and their swords and their shields. And they're going, we're going to get this guy. They listen to him for like a couple of minutes. And they go, we can't arrest this guy. We've never heard a guy talk like this before. So people would go to see Jesus just because of the words that were coming out of his mouth, because the words that he spoke gave life. It made a difference when you heard him. I'm supposed to do something, but he would do this Jedi mind trick. We are not the, what? These, these are not the... He's not, he's not the droids that you're looking for, right? He would just do this mind trick and like, we're supposed to arrest this guy. Oh, no, we want to get baptized. You know what I mean? But that was Jesus. And so, of course, when he came home, he came to Capernaum. The, he was born where? In a little town of? But he lived, right? He lived in, in Capernaum. So when he goes back home, his family is there. Crowds are there. They want to see Jesus. They want to see him do something, say something. And so crowds were there. And, 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 no, and, and, when, and when these people, when these men, they, they, they came to bring a paralyzed friend to Jesus, there was, there, was, there was no way for them to get inside the house. And Jesus, he's inside the house, and he's talking. He's talking that day. He's not feeding them. He's not turning water into wine. He's not even doing any healings. He's in this house, and he's just teaching. He's speaking, and the crowds are around the house. But these men, they came, they came with a purpose. What was their purpose? For their friend. For their friend. A friend was paralyzed. He couldn't walk. And so it says that there was, there was some men came. So some men came and four of the men. So there's more than four. There's some men, but four of the men are, are carrying this guy on this mat. Picture this in your mind. Come with me to this place. And they come in and they, and they can't even get close. And so these men, and they must have had some sort of military uh, uh, background, and so they're going, we can't get in through the door, we can't get in through the window, we can't get in through the back. Okay, we've got to scale the roof. But we have a problem. This guy is paralyzed. He can't, he can't, and the elevators are broken. <laughs> they're not even invented for a few thousand years. Stairs isn't a thing yet. So how are they going to get a ladder? No, no, they're not going to get this guy up on a ladder. So, so then they decided, we got to get this guy on the roof. Okay, so there's men. Remember, four of them are carrying them. All right, four of you guys go up on the roof. 
and the four of us will stay down here. When you guys get up there, we're going to lift this guy, and you grab him, and we'll push him, and he'll get on the roof. Okay, so what's the plan after that? Well, it's a tile roof. We're just going to have to start moving tiles. So the other four men that were on the ground, now they go up on the roof. And so now there's how many guys on the roof? At, at the minimum, there's what? There's eight guys on the roof. So these eight. Yeah, 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 nine. But the guy was like, hmm. Moral support, right? <laughs> Why did you, you have to do the nine thing? I was on a roll, and now you gave me nine guys. My whole story was based on eight guys. Sandy, I'm going to tag you. You go in up there. <laughs> I'm done. Nine guys. Okay, so there's, there's nine guys on the roof. Now I've got to totally reset myself with the story. So there's nine guys <laughs> on the roof. And, and, and they go, all right, so Jesus is talking. And remember, this is somebody's house. And they're on a tail, a tail uh, roof. And so they, they hear these guys walking on these tiles. They're like, <laughs> and Jesus is in there. The owner of the house is in there. And they go, well, yeah, I think this is the living room right here. You know, we've been to this house before. We, had, we came here for a potluck after church one day. <laughs> and Jesus is in the living room talking. So he's like right here, right down here. And so these eight guys, nine guys, was just like talking to him. And so they start removing the tiles from the roof. Now, now Jesus is inside the house, and he's in the living room, and he's talking, and the tiles start opening up. What happens when people start pulling out tiles from a roof? Dust and debris starts falling on Jesus. Jesus is going, yo, what's happening here? The owner of the house is like freaking out, like, what are you doing to my house? I just paid eight shekels for this roof. And so these guys are digging it, but before anything can happen, boom, they're seeing daylight through the roof, right? And, and the guys just need to make a hole how big to get this guy through? Like six feet, right? Six feet? And so there's a, there's a six feet hole, and now like Jesus is looking up, like the homeowner's going, he's like saying bad words, you know what I mean? And everybody else is in there, and then, then all of a sudden, the men disappear for like a split second and they come back and it looks like they, they, they come back with like a carpet or a rug or something. And then all of a sudden they start lowering this, 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 this rug down into the middle and, and the, these, these people are looking at it like, there's a guy in there. And they lower this guy down. And so then like people like are inside the house, you know, listening to Jesus. They go, we got to get this guy. He's going to fall. And so they get up there and they're holding this guy. And, and they grab this guy. And, and, and the crowd inside the house, they lower this guy. And they bring him right to the feet of Jesus. They knew what they needed to do. The people in the, inside the house saying, this guy can't walk. His friends just boosted this guy on the roof. They tore apart the roof to lower this guy in. This guy needs to see Jesus. And so there's, there he is. He's, he's, he's in front. These men must have really cared about their friend because they wanted to make him whole. They wanted him to be happy they believed that the, this, the only way this man could be whole in his, in his heart and in his mind and especially in his body is if he meets Jesus. And they were willing to move heaven and earth for that to happen. Jesus, he... He bends over and he looks at this man whose, whose friends have done so much to get him into that position. And the Bible says, when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralyzed man, son, your sins are forgiven. When Jesus saw Whose faith? When Jesus saw whose faith? 
Are you sure it says that? When Jesus saw their faith? Wait, Jesus didn't see the man's faith? Jesus saw their faith. Their are, are who? So when Jesus saw his friend's faith, he said, son, your sins are forgiving. So the healing had, had nothing to do with the paralyzed man or his faith? It had nothing to do with him? According to the scripture, it didn't. Jesus heals the man based on all the things his friends did to get him to church. Are you with me right now? Jesus healed the man solely based on what his friends did to get him into church. But then you say, wait a minute, Pastor, wait a minute, Pastor, pa Pastor, 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 Pastor Rob. It wasn't church. It was a person's house. So then let me ask you this question. What is church? Is church this building? Is that what church is? Is church this building? There's like three no's, one yes. So then what happens? Heaven forbid if this church burns down. Is there no more church here? What happens if the city or the government shut this place down? Is there no more church here? No. Thank you. No, of course not. Church isn't a building. Church is a people, not a building. People. Well, well Rob, that's, you can say that, Rob, but how can you prove that? So in the Bible, I think I have a slide for this. In the Bible, uh, the Greek word for church is ecclesia. Say that with me. Ecclesia. In Spanish, it's called... There's not one person in here that speaks Spanish. Iglesia. How about French? Iglesia. So in Greek, it's ek, ecclesia. In Spanish, it's iglesia. So it's a, it's, a, it's a close word. And, 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 and it, ecclesia is a combination of the Greek words kaleo, which means to call, and the prefix ek, which means out. So literally, it means the called out ones. And ecclesia refers to a pers purposeful gathering of people united by identity and purpose in Christ. Okay? Ecclesia is a gathering of people united united by their identity and purpose in Christ. That's what church is. So church, by definition, has absolutely zero to do with building. I usually get like an amen for a statement that profound, right? So church has zero, absolutely nothing to do with a building. Are you with me? It has nothing. There's, there, there's no correlation. This is just where... The people united in identity and purpose in Christ, this is just the place where they meet. This is the place where the church meets. This is only a building. It is not the church. The church is, what, is what's sitting in the pews. Are you with me? Church. Because I, if I say, are you with me, church, Ben, the church doesn't, like, open the walls and go, amen, Pastor Rob, now you're preaching. <laughs> no. The church can't say amen. The church can't talk to me because the church is an inanimate thing. It's just a building. So how could this be anything but that? Only a building. Church is people. Amen. You're the church. We're the church. So church was, check this out. Church was never meant to be a spectator sport. If you can't say amen, say ouch. Hmm? It's never meant. It's never meant for you just to come in and sit down and, 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 and listen to music and, and, and give a couple of bucks and then listen to the, the pastor preach. That's not church. That, that, 
that by definition, that's not church. So then, let me ask you this. Did those men bring their friend to church that day? Absolutely. 100% yes. They were united by their identity. The men believed in Jesus. The men also believed that meeting Jesus can make a difference in a person's life. Were, they, were the men united in purpose? Yes. Their purpose was to bring people to Jesus. Their purpose was to allow Jesus to change the lives of their friends. That day, their purpose was for Jesus to heal their sick friend. That day, they had church. Are you with me? That day, they had church. So here's, here's the interesting thing that happened that day. When Jesus sees this man, obviously, right, obviously he's paralyzed, um, and, 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 and his friends, they believe in the power of Jesus, who's, who's down in the building, to, to change this man's life. Jesus um, doesn't heal this man's body and then just cause the man to walk out like a boss, right? Jesus doesn't heal his body. That's an amazing cat. I can't get my cat to do that yet. But Sandy knows I'm trying, you know, same color, everything. No, 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 no. Jesus doesn't heal this man's body. That, and, and, and that's the obvious thing. It's like Jesus, this man's paralyzed. He, he, doesn't, he doesn't come for you to say, son, your sins are forgiven. He's, he's coming for you to say, son, stand up and walk, right? But Jesus doesn't say that to him. Jesus doesn't say that this guy... Uh, you know, a stand up a walk. He says, son, your sins are forgiven. Nothing to do with him getting up and walking. In fact, there were some teachers of the law that were, that were in the room with Jesus and they took issue with Jesus because only God can forgive sins and Jesus has to deal with that, that mess first. And then after Jesus deals with them, Jesus reads their thoughts and he deals with these guys and then he, he goes to the man Finally, and he says, I tell you, get up, take up your mat, and go home. Everyone in the building, everyone at church totally freaks out. And the Bible says in verse 12, this amazed everyone, and they praised God saying, we have never seen anything like this. Amen, somebody? They had church that day. Jesus first heals the man's heart and mind. Your sins are forgiven. Whatever guilt that man had been carrying, whatever remorse that he had um, for all these years, he now feels like a new man, even though he still can't walk. He still can't walk, but his heart and his mind has been healed first. I'm looking at my sisters because there's meaning in that passage. Looking at my brother-in-law, his mind was healed first. And once his mind was, was healed, he didn't care about his body. Whatever happened, my mind, my heart is healed. Jesus said, your sins are forgiven. And Jesus sets this man up. The man needs nothing more. So imagine his surprise when Jesus turns his way again after dealing with the teachers of the law and he looks this man straight in the eye as he's crumpled on a mat before Jesus and he says, get up. Take up your mat. Carry it home. Use it in front of your doorway because you'll never have to lay on this mat again. This, mat, this man, he doesn't wait for a second. He gets up and he walks. And God is good, church family, right? And church is a gathering of people united by their identity and purpose in Christ. And your purpose, Modesto Central, 
is to bring people to the foot of Jesus for them to meet him, for, them, for Jesus to heal their mind and for Jesus to heal their body. That's our purpose, right? We have 52 times a year, right, to meet here, to come to church, to bring a friend, to serve in some capacity that people will meet Jesus and be healed in their heart and in their body. It's not going to happen like this, that every Sabbath we carry somebody to church. But every Sabbath, there's a way that we can open our doors so that healing can happen. I think in the lobby, we were setting up for like a ministries fair, right? And what kind of ministries do you do here at Modesto? Small groups, small groups so that people can go to a small group and meet Jesus. What else? Service groups they, they, that you can, I know something you do with the, the food people out here and pink faces and stuff like that, right? So there's, there's so many different ways that you can serve, uh, you know, uh, the AV, music, deacon, Sabbath school, uh, Pathfinders, Adventurers. Do you have that here? No sharing. This is something we don't share. <laughs> you can share a lot of things. We don't share children's ministries. Oh, stop. Oh, is this being recorded? Oh, okay. <laughs> Erase. We can share. But you know what? <laughs> we want children's ministries to happen here, right? We want adventures, we want pathfinders, we want youth, we want children's church, we want all those things, right? Because when we have um, young people in our church that we saw with children's story, right, that means we have young families. Young families mean we have a future, right? Young families mean we have a future. And so all these things are ways that we serve every single, every single Saturday. And so it's important for us to, because imagine this, right? Imagine, so the man, he, he, goes, he goes home with his friends and everything else, but there's a hole in this guy's roof, and there's, there's dust and broken tile all over his floor. Who, who's who's going to clean up if everybody leaves? His wife. <laughs> his poor wife has to clean up. That's not fair for the poor wife. We shouldn't put the responsibility on the poor wife, right? And that's why, and that's why we, there's, a, there's a responsibility. The church is called the, the something of Christ. It's called the, the body. And the body just doesn't have a mouth like Pastor Rob and Pastor Sandy, right? The, 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 the church body just doesn't have musicians, right, to sing and stuff. The, the church body has arms and legs and fingers and, and toes to, 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 to grab a, a, a broom and to grab a, a dustpan and to climb up on the roof and put back tiles, right? This is how they serve Jesus. This is how they do church, one identity, one purpose. We've got to set this place up again so that next week, when Jesus comes back, there can be more healing of heart and mind and body. Amen. And this is how we do church, by serving alongside of each other. It's not all glamorous, right? We have to have the wives and the husbands and the children working together. It's not fair for the wives. Somebody say amen. amen. <laughs> so let me ask you this. How are we doing in fulfilling our purpose as Ecclesia in Modesto Central? If you're going to give yourself a grade, A, B, C, D, what, what grade do we give ourselves, right? What grade do we serve, give ourselves in serving God's purpose? Sandy, you know? How are we doing in, serve, in, in serving and fulfilling God's purpose and being the ecclesia? We're going to find out next month we'll have a church survey. We're going to have a church survey next month. But this is, these are the questions that we have to ask our, 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 ourselves, right? Are we bringing people in to see Jesus? Are, are we removing all obstacles? Are, are we using our strengths to put people 
in front of Jesus into his presence? Are we celebrating the changes that happen in people's lives? Because, because this is ecclesia. This is church. So I haven't been here for a minute. Some of you may know why. Some of you may not know why. Um, so since the last time I was here, I was diagnosed with cancer. I had surgery for cancer to be removed. And most importantly, I was healed of cancer. All right. And <laughs> because there's, there's, there's a world where I'm not here, right? But that's not the world that we live in, right? The world that we live in, I'm, I'm back, and I get to be with you, and I get to be with Sandy, and I get to see my mom, and I get to see my sisters, right? And so all through this journey, I was surrounded by people who were united in identity and purpose in Christ. My family, they lifted me up, and they brought me into the presence of God. Modesto Central, you sent me texts. You sent me emails. You sent food. You sent thoughts. You sent prayers. All through my journey, right? You were my church. You were my family. You are my support. And when I was going through the valley of the shadow of death, I had you alongside me on my right and on my left and lifting me up to the throne room of God. And then my, and my heavenly father heard your prayers and, and he first he healed my heart, right? That was the first thing he did at my sister's house with my brother-in-law. And I'll never forget that. That was like the most powerful moment of my life. Just being able to, to be prayed over by the people who love me the most, right? That by the people who, who've been with me the longest, by the person who brought me life into this planet. And to have them all put their hands on me and pray over me, I'll never forget. And at that moment when my brother-in-law was, was praying over me, he had his hands on, on my, my, my shoulders. And I had Ada on my left side and I had Sarah on my right side. My brother-in-law is praying for my healing. He's, he's lifting me up. He's, he's digging the hole in the roof. And, and, and everyone's praying for my healing and believing that I would be healed. This, this wasn't a request. We were asking God to do this. And after the prayer, I was, I was overcome with emotion. I believe with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my being, at that moment, I was filled with the Holy Spirit. I believe, again, with all my heart and my soul and my being, that at that moment, I was healed. But not in the way we were asking. All of a sudden, I, I turned to my sister, Ada, and, I, and, I, and we grab each other and we hug each other. And we don't hug that often. We don't hug at all. And I'm, I'm losing it. I'm just crying. Just feeling the love from my sister. And in that moment, I, I just apologized to her. I said, I'm sorry for not being the brother that I know I could have been, and I should be. I just said, I'm sorry. And she cried and, and, and held me and hugged me really tight. And I felt the healing happen at that moment. And then I turned to Sarah. Sarah and I are one year apart. And I did the same thing. I just hugged her. And cried. And I whispered in her ear, Sarah, I'm sorry for not being the brother that I know I could be, that I know that I should be. And Sarah gets hysterical. 
And she's crying, and through her tears she said, you don't know how long I've waited to hear those words. I, I had no clue that there was a, a separation, a thing, until she said that. And I realized that when I become a Christian, I stopped being a brother to my sisters. When I gave my life to the Lord, I stopped being their brother for whatever reason, and I, and I, I became more concerned with their salvation, with their souls, with their lifestyle, with everything else. I still love them like crazy, but I became their pastor, their spiritual mentor, instead of their brother. And they'd missed Rob, just Rob. And God healed us that day. And at that moment, I could care less if I had cancer. I could care less. Because if I know that I'm right with, with the people that I love the most, it's all good. I'm ready to go. Take me. And we let it go. But like the story in Mark, Jesus goes, no, it's not enough. I, I, yes, I, I allowed this to happen so that there can be a healing between you and your sister. Absolutely, 100%. I allowed this to happen so that you could have a greater appreciation and a greater focus in life. Yes, Rob, I allowed this to happen. But Rob, I care about you. I care about your body. And when I went in for surgery, they, they, they cut me open and they, and they removed the cancer. But because the, the, the melanoma was so deep, they had to remove the lymph nodes in my armpits to test because if the lymph nodes came back positive, that means the cancer had spread. It would have gone from a stage two cancer to a stage four cancer. And so we waited and we prayed and you prayed. And a week later, Sandy and I were in a restaurant having lunch and all of a sudden, the surgeon calls. I'm going, Sandy, this is it. And I answered the phone in the restaurant. I said, yes. Put her on speakerphone. And she goes, Rob, I have some good news for you. We removed all the cancer. You are now cancer free. <laughs> Best thing I've heard in all my life, right? Except the maybe your pregnant thing, right? I can barely make it through the conversation with her. And we hang up the phone, thanking her. And Sandy and I, we just start bawling in the middle of this restaurant. She's crying and I'm crying. And I, I get off my chair. Sandy's on the, against the wall on the, on the, on the soft seat. And I, I come next to her and I hold her. And we're both just holding each other and just bawling that God has gave us good, this good news. And I, couldn't, I could sense that people, Ben, were looking at us in the restaurant, like both losing it. And I told Sandy, you got to stop crying because everyone's thinking I'm breaking up with you. <laughs> Church family, listen. Ecclesia, is people united by their identity and purpose in Christ. And our purpose will always be to bring people into the presence of God. Amen? From the story in Mark 2, there will always be work for us to do. His friends had to carry him there. They had to lift him up onto the roof. They had to tear open a hole in the roof. They had to rope this man down on, on mats to lower him into room. But after that day... They walked together, they ran together, they skipped together, they even danced all the way home with their friend who could walk, dance, skip, and run with them. Praising God that their friend had met Jesus and his life was forever changed that day. Modesto Central, you ask, what is church? This is church. 
is when we love and we care for people, when we serve them by removing all obstacles, doing everything in our power, working together to have Jesus make life-changing moments for them. This is church. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, Lord, thank you so much for blessing us, not only with your presence, but with a message from your word. Your word still speaks to us today. We can, we can read these stories. We can apply them to our experience and say, this is church. This is how we're supposed to act. This is what we are supposed to do. But still, Father, in, in us knowing all these things, it's still hard for us, Father, to actually put these things in motion because we've, we've become so comfortable in just doing church instead of being church. And so, Father, it is my prayer as we, as we go through this series, as we've learned the lessons from today, that, Father, that we would be the church that you want us to be. Working together with one identity, one purpose in Christ, to bring our friends, to bring people in this neighborhood and in this city into your presence so that you can heal them, Father, in whatever manner they need it. And so, Father, we thank you and we ask and pray that you'll continue to guide and to lead and to bless Modesto Central. For in Jesus' name we pray. And Modesto said, Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I worship your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a Time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. Will you stand and sing this with me? Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I worship Your holy and love you're rich in love and you're slow to anger your name is great and your heart is kind for all your goodness I will keep on singing ten thousand ten thousand reasons for my heart to find bless the lord bless the lord oh my soul oh my soul worship his holy name sing like never before sing like never strength is failing. 
thousand years and then forevermore. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord of my soul, all of my soul. Worship Thank you. Thank you, Sunnyvale, for being in the house today. Hope you guys were blessed. Um, remember on your way out, there's lots of opportunities out there to uh, find a way that you might bring someone to church, to a small group, or in any other way. But I also want to remind you that next week is our Thanksgiving celebration together as church family. Bring something to share to Potluck. You can bring it in at 9.45. We have it during Sabbath school and in between church. The service will actually start at 11.15 to give us a little extra time to enjoy each other and some food together. And we are having a baptism again next week. So we will be celebrating people giving their lives to God and finding that healing in Him. So hopefully we'll see you next Sabbath. Go with God. Have an awesome week. Be blessed. And thank you for coming to church today. Thank you for coming and being church today. Amen. Amen.